and holding their noses and blowing to equalize re-entry pressures. Always before, we've had to be content with merely listening to our astronauts during their flights. In Apollo 7, through the medium of television, we could actually see them in space for the first time and become better acquainted with weightless life aboard a spacecraft. You pick it up. I can read it now. Just a minute. It says, from that uh, lovely Apollo something. You guys should write Apollo room. High, High atop everything. Something. High atop everything. Looks good. I can see Wally Hamlin now. Don has a smile on his face, and there's Walt. Okay, what's the next one? A little closer, Wally. So keep those cards coming. Cards and letters coming in. Coming in, folks. It's loud and clear. Roger. Good morning to everyone in television land. You're looking at the right-hand portion of the main display console. In the upper left-hand portion of your view, you would see the uh, instruments that have to do with the cryogenics that are used to power the fuel cells and provide breathing oxygen to the spacecraft. As the flight of Apollo 7 proceeded day by day, confidence in men and equipment grew. The astronauts became accustomed to their home high atop everything. They had a chance to evaluate it as a place to live and work in space. was a chance to photograph Cane Gladys, which raked across Florida and headed out into the Atlantic. There was a chance to photograph areas of the Earth not previously pictured from space. For example, the coast of Chile and the Andes mountain range. The crew could evaluate such things as the importance of exercising. The quality of sleeping arrangements, the palatability of food, seemingly small items, but things of essential importance in a lunar mission. They even recorded the preparation of a drink for a meal. Uh, we have Tom at uh, Australia. By the time Apollo 7 entered its 11th day in space, it had exceeded the time required for a flight to the moon and back. It was also well on its way to accomplishing all planned objectives and more. Apollo 7 was called 101% successful. On the morning of October 22, 1968, Apollo 7 began its final revolution, the 163rd. At approximately 259 hours and 39 minutes after liftoff, the spacecraft propulsion system was burned for the final time, and Apollo 7 headed home to Earth. From motion picture film recorded during an earlier unmanned Apollo mission, we get some idea what the trip back through the atmosphere was like. Less than an hour after touchdown in the Atlantic Ocean, the flight crew emerged from helicopters which had brought them to the recovery ship, the carrier USS Essex. Apollo flight can be undertaken with confidence that our brand new spacecraft is, as Commander Walter Schirra reported, a magnificent flying machine.